welcome or welcome back to a game of fangs and thrones my name's hannah and you're watching my recent reads video i have the little stack here with the cable hanging out of it because you know why not yeah we have the little box here and these are not, probably not all of the books but they are most of the books i don't know if there are any kindle books on here because i forgot to write them down before i start filming but we're just going to dive right in now some of these i won't be able to remember what i rated them but i will be able to tell you what they're about and if i enjoyed them or not so let's just dive right in we have Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. This is a reimagining of the legend of Shang-Chi. I'm probably saying that wrong and I apologise. Uh, the Moon Goddess, which is a Chinese... It's the Chinese myth about the autumn moon, I believe. But basically, Zhang Xin is the Moon Goddess's daughter and she has been hiding her entire life um to keep her safe but she didn't realize that at the time and her magic flares sending out a beacon almost to the emperor and then to save herself and her mother's life because her mother is being imprisoned um by the emperor sung she runs away and in a cruel yet amusing twist of fate she ends up in the service of the emperor's son the Celestial Emperor. And she's right where she needs to be. Sorry, she's right where she doesn't need to be because she has to keep her entire identity a secret. Uh, but it is just a cute, sweet story of finding yourself, keeping up, um, being able to come to terms with inheritance and how your parents do kind of make an influence on who you are but that you are still your own person and i believe this has a sequel that has just come out and the cover is just as gorgeous uh this is the fairy loot edition i think i gave it 4.5 stars there were just a couple of bits that i didn't that meant it wasn't an all-time favorite but it was still an enjoyable read and right, then we have goddess of love by pc cast this is an installment in the goddess summoning novel this one oh that's a bit close follows p chamberlain as the mortal and she accidentally invokes and i've just set the tbr card off again uh, but this follows p chamberlain who is the mortal and she invokes the help of aphrodite and there are two love stories in this, which I thought was very nicely done. Uh, we have P and the... It doesn't say on here, so I don't want to say. But we have P and her mystery man. And then we have uh, Venus or Aphrodite herself and Griffin. So basically what's happening is P is sick of being overlooked. She's sick of being single and being the one that everyone forgets. And she has a crush on her next door neighbour, Griffin, who is a fireman. And in a very weird coincidence, she ends up uh, invoking Aphrodite from this old book that she saw in a bookshop. And Aphrodite at the time. So she's called Venus, but I always I'm more familiar with Greek terminology than Roman. Uh, but anyway, so Venus Aphrodite. Uh, she is so um she's in fact she's sitting in Tulsa, Oklahoma, with her friend Persephone who is in the goddess of springbook which i have read and enjoyed that one that was my first sort of adult romance in this type of writing but it's very steamy it gets you very hot under the collar and it's very well written i gave this one five stars i loved how 
all four of the characters went through their growth. They went through um some major self actualization that's not the word but they went through a lot and matured for that and there were other elements that i think weren't nicely handled but i'm sure people may disagree uh the rest of these are all paperback yeah and i'm just going to run through them give you because this video is already five minutes long, so I'm going to talk about two books. Uh, but we have The Upper World by Femi Faguba. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Can someone please tell me? Uh, this follows Esso, who is a teenager running out of time and he's going in trouble. Uh, he has the ability to see glimpses of the future. So he's haunted by uh, shooting that he sees uh, but then jump forward a generation later we follow Rhea who's 15 years old and searching for answers to her past. Esso and Rhea collide and they turn the world on its head basically and they discover how they're connected and what the far-reaching consequences of Esso's actions were. Four stars because the math and the science went a bit over my head, but it was still an enjoyable read other than that. Uh, we have With Fire in Their Blood by Kat Delacorte. Uh, I hope to God this is the start of a series. Um, I didn't check, but oh my God. Uh, this follows Lily, who arrives in Cas Castello, which gives me um, Romeo and Juliet and inspired vibes this basically gives me witchy vibes but make it romeo and juliet we have a clan war we have secrets we have people pretending they're not who they're supposed to be and it is a very enjoyable read and i believe this was a debut and lily gives me major bisexual vibes um i could be reading into that i'm not bisexual uh, but she just gives me those vibes she is drawn to lisa who's rebellious brooding nico and sensitive christian and yeah turns out that she breaks castillo's most important rule and on a routine blood test she finds out that she's not entirely human so there comes the mystery but yeah this is such a stunning cover as well there's just something about it that appeals uh then we have spell slinger by C C uh, sebastian de castel following uh, kellen who is a, a young mage approaching his 16th birthday and he has no magic so in this world that sets him apart from his family his people but then he may meets a stranger who has name I have forgotten. Oh, it's going to bug me. Ferrius. <laughs> he meets Ferrius who tells him that magic is all a con game and she has a way out for him. Which was very interesting and I love the little snarky cat. And the snarky cat was my favourite. Can I give her five stars just for the cat? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, very enjoyable. Will be continuing when I see the books. Uh, we have an Anne Cleves book. We have The Long Call. Now, I have read the first of the Vera books as well. Uh, but I can't remember if I reviewed it, but we're talking about this one. This is The Long Call of following Matthew, who is a detective callback to his hometown um in the terms of he's mourning his father from a distance because he's estranged from his family they are very evangelical yes very evangelical and matthew started questioning that side of his faith a long time ago which resulted in excommunication from his family and his community and it probably doesn't help as well that Matthew is gay and married to a man. Now, there is 
elements in here that of do need a sensitivity to them um i do like the way it was handled but i'm not own voices for this i can't talk about this uh, but basically there are characters in here who are down syn who sorry they have down syndrome and that is something that is used almost as a plot device but not in the way that everything is blamed on them it is their down syndrome that means what happened was bad was worse um and the characteristics as i understand them of down syndrome were used by the antagonist to get what he wanted um and where this comes in is because uh, matthew matthew venn his partner runs the day center where these girls were implicated and there's the issue of Matthew is the only person that these girls will trust, but because it is his partner's uh, project, his partner's business, there is the element of, is he getting too close? Is it too close to home? So, very interesting read. I do like um, Anne Cleves' writing from the two books that I've read, and she is a backlist author that I'm trying to get through. We have Elizabeth Lim, uh, Spin the Dawn, the the sequel is out now i'm hoping to read it eventually uh, this is project one way meets mulan basically and i absolutely adored it it had everything i wanted from a book like this there's the magical shape-shifting element the magic world i love asian mythology i have to say there's something of even if it's just Asian inspired, there's something very comforting about it. But basically, in this one, we follow Maya Cameron, who wants to become a tailor. She's already working in her father's shop. She's keeping them afloat, I think it's implied. Uh, but because she's a girl, there's not much more she can do. So she becomes, she disguises herself as her brother in place of her father when he's when mr tamarind is asked to be to travel to the palace to become the emperor's new tailor and it also stems from there you have your mulan trope where Maya is described as a man uh disguised as a man sorry uh you have your shapeshifter who has his own secrets and his own reasons for wanting to help maya the Emperor's new wife is a bit of a shady character. And yeah, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. I loved how petty certain characters seemed until you got to know them. Then we have another murder mystery. We have A Good Girl's, a Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. The first in the series following Pip Jackson. No, Pitt, no Pippa Fitt. Fits a movie where I get that name from, but she is investigating a cold case of, because her friend was implicated as the murderer five years ago, and because of evidence at the time, uh, people just assumed that this friend Sal did it. However, Pippa is not so sure, and she goes out of her way and as part of her final year project at school she decides to find out the real killer and it was a very interesting twisty turny ride i think the outcome was very well done because sal unfortunately did commit suicide because of the accusation so because he wasn't there to prove himself innocent or guilty either way the blame was put on him to make it nice and easy to wrap up the case uh, there was sad dog stuff in here. Just be very wary of that because that got me. And the uh, actual killer's motives seemed sound to me. There is the underlying element of there's something more going on. And I am very intrigued to find out. Then the last book I promise in this video is Mina and the Undead by Amy McCaw. And I know I'm getting the sequel for this one for christmas because i was there in one shot and, uh, when james bought me it but uh this follows mina who is a bit of a 
horror fanatic and New, New Orleans is a vampire haven basically uh, but she's trying to make up with her sister Libby so she moves in for the summer uh, lands a part-time job at the horror movie mansion and meets Jared who's Libby's tortured housemate shall we say and then there is another roommate in here whose name I have also forgotten who has troubles of his own this is very chock full of trigger warnings I would say and just be wary of going into it about certain subjects i think death is mentioned but basically it is a vampire murder mystery and i am very intrigued but then again new orleans fangfest someone is replicating new orleans most brutal supernatural killings it's going to be vampires in some way shape or form isn't it but the sequel, Mina and the Slayers, has come out, so that is something I want to read. So, short, sweet, maybe a bit rushed, but I'm out of practice. I'm getting back into this, okay? Uh, but anyway, what have you recently been reading? Do you agree with any of these ratings? Basically, I all, they're probably a majority of three, four stars. Um, don't think I had any five stars worth mentioning, but I did all did enjoy them all at the time. And yeah, so give me a like if you like this video and hit that subscribe button if you want to see this. Talk about these and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.